me fresh, I rock well. Hey guys. <laughs> so I'm Koshi, founder and CEO of Stemless, and Stemless is an online ordering platform for, oh, I'm going to speak closer to the mic. So Stemless is an online ordering platform for cannabis, and we operate in rec use states. And what we do is we partner with dispensaries, and we make it very easy for their customers to not only see live menus that are pulled straight from their POS systems, but then take it one step further and actually transact online. So that means place those pre-orders, request those deliveries, and even pay online in a way that's fully compliant with all respective state banking laws. So what I'm gonna talk to you about today specifically in that vein is data and your rights to data and what you can do to protect yourself within that space. And the reason that this is especially important right now is A, it's topical, right? I mean, we're all, we're all seeing the headlines about Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, so that's a relevant topic to all of us. But then B, within cannabis, we've got, there, there's this dichotomy between state laws and federal laws. And a breach of data in our industry is a lot more, how do I say this? It's the implications and the ramifications go a lot further. So with that, your data and your rights. So to go back to what I was saying earlier, you've got the ability to purchase on the state level. And in New York, that's medicinal. In other states, that's you know recreational for all users 21 and older. And so you think you're protected in that, hey, you can go to any store, you can purchase on Stemless or any, you know, any sort of e-commerce e online platform that sells, and you should be good. But within that, we do see that a lot of customers, even though they have the ability to purchase legally, don't. And just to go through a few of the use cases and the reasons that you see that, one, you've got health insurance, which is available on the national level, and there's a lot of patients. I mean, I just heard of a case today where I know a woman, she just got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, it's very sad. And she qualifies in the state of New York for a medical card. But yet, she also receives about $250,000 worth of health insurance payments. So does that mean she's gonna run out and go get that medical card? You would think, yeah, I mean, she qualifies, right? But she has concerns that if her health insurance company finds out about this, that they're gonna do something that voids that contract that they have with her to service her illness, which she now has for the rest of her life. So she doesn't wanna go put that at risk and do that. And that's a valid concern. The other issue is employment. What you're starting to see in a lot of recreational states are employers who have the legal right and exercise the right to stop their consumers or stop their employees from smoking. So they have instituted randomized drug tests and they've instituted them after legalization has occurred. And, you know, frankly, if you get high on Saturday, why does it matter what you do on Wednesday? But yet, they do have the legal right to terminate you, which is nonsense, but it happens. And so, lastly, before I get into the next point, there's also the issue of judgments, right? I mean, there's plenty of cases where there's alimony at stake, there's marital problems, there's child support, and if it comes out that you are a consumer, that could be ruled against you or used to rule against you. And it's not fair, none of this is right, but it does occur. And so from that standpoint, your data in this space, in this industry is very important, and the way it's handled and treated is also of utmost importance. And you know, it's not something that people tend to think of when they first think about, oh, I wanna go buy cannabis, I'm entitled to. but it can be used against you in ways that you might not initially recognize. And we do see that concern from our customers and it is something that, you know, being on the e-commerce side that we have to defend against and be extremely vigilant with what we do and how we do it. So with that, there's a few different types of data transmission. And the first is intentional transmission. And these aren't necessarily bad but it's something that you might wanna be aware of if you're gonna interact in the space. So first is sharing. 
So with a lot of companies, especially online, they will need to interact with other businesses in order to make sure a transaction happens. So for example, on Stemless, we process payments, but we don't actually process payments. It's like if you go to target.com and you buy on Target, Target is not the bank processing the payments. That information is sent through very, very specialized, tightly controlled chains to somebody else who then processes the data, sends it back to Target, tells them, hey, it's okay to sell this thing to this customer, we're good, and then Target sells you the product. And you know, to what Alex was saying earlier, you can't reinvent the wheel at every step of the value chain. You have to pick your battles, where am I the best? And then you do outsource other parts of it. And so you wanna make sure that the companies that you're interacting with take their part in the value chain very seriously as well as the partners that they're getting into bed with, right? Next, they're selling. And this one's a little bit more insidious and it happens and it's fine. And I mean, it's, it's how advertising works. And it really comes down to, are you okay with it? What is being sold? What's being protected? And keep in mind that with any product, if you're not paying for it, you're not the customer. You are the product. So that goes back to Cambridge Analytica, right? With Facebook. We all use Facebook, it's free. And they can sell that data and you're valuable to them. Every single user on Facebook has a monetary value associated with them based on the actions that you take, how active you are on the platform, and who your friends are. And so anytime you get something for free, think about that and where you fall in that and what your comfort level is. And lastly, there's cookies and tracking. And this goes in the other direction where the company's not necessarily sharing the data, but they might be getting that data on you from other sources. And again, I wanna highlight that this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on whether you think personally it's a bad thing. And with cookies and tracking, you know, you buy a pair of shoes on J.Crew. And then for the next two weeks, all you see is that pair of shoes. Like, that's so great. I bought a pair of shoes, now I need 12 more. No, like, the one you bought was probably gonna be good for now, right? But that's how cookies and tracking work. They just find out what your behavior is elsewhere, and they get you at the moment when you're ready to make a purchase decision. It's not always intelligently done in the case of if you bought a washing machine. Now you're gonna see washing machines for the next year of your life, but it's effective in certain circumstances. Now the next one, unintentional transmission, this one's the one that's a lot more dangerous because you're not gonna find this highlighted in their terms of conditions. A lot of these happen accidentally. These aren't things that are done on purpose necessarily. So the first one is leaks. So in terms, and in, in this often happens with feature rollout. So does everyone know about a company called Strava? Yeah, you guys use it? Okay, two of you. I also don't run, so I'm gonna join the rest, the other 98% in the room. So Strava is an app that tracks runners, and it's like, it's got some crazy high, like, usage among runners. Runners are obsessed with it. Like, 98% of runners use it. And it tracks where you run, it gives you all these statistics, you've got this community. A couple of months ago, they decided to do something really cool, which is, or what they thought was really cool, innocently. They thought, hey, what if we showed all of these people that are running the other people that are running? And it just like fosters this community, right? Like, hey, I'm running, it sucks, I'm sweaty, I feel hot, but hey, there's seven other people doing it in my neighborhood, that's kinda cool. And like, look at all the runners worldwide, that's really cool. What wasn't cool is that some of those runners were running on US military bases that were secret and covert and they didn't want that to be known. And obviously the US government does not want that to be known. And so overnight, through this product rollout that they thought would be cute and friendly and fun and hey, we're this cool community, turned into a huge data problem where they didn't tell people that they were rolling this out and say, hey, do you wanna opt in or not? They just assumed like, oh, of course, people love sharing. People don't love sharing. So when it comes to rolling out product features, it's really important to think of all the people that are using your product and all of the different use case scenarios for it and could anyone be hurt by it? And even, in, even if you think no one's gonna be hurt by this, it's so simple, it's so easy, still take a step back and make it optional. 
it will save you so much heartache. The next is hacking. And I mean, we all know hacking, there's different types. I mean, it can be anything from, you know, you get an email from eBay and it says, hey, we lost a bunch of your credit card data, someone took it, Re change all your passwords. Or it could be DDoS attacks, like we're gonna bring your site down. I actually, we had that happen about six months ago and I still don't know why, like what was the end game there, right? Like you didn't get any money, you didn't win anything, you just ruined our week. But the best in this situation, you know, with any unintentional data transmission, your best defense is your offense. So thinking about, hey, what are all the shady, shitty things that people can do? And how do we stop them from doing it to us? And the last is unauthorized use. And for those of you who've seen a little bit of the Cambridge Analytica thing, but you don't know fully exactly what was happening behind the scenes there, basically there's an API. Facebook has thousands of APIs and Cambridge Analytica had access to a few of them. And they used it in a way that was against Facebook's terms and use statement and used that to get data on people that Facebook was not comfortable selling and actually turns out is kind of illegal to sell. And then they sold it. So in this case, Facebook was thinking, oh, you know what? We told them they couldn't use it and sell it, so they won't do it. That was dumb, I mean, as we found out. But in creating APIs, it's really important if you're the company creating the API, giving your data out to other third-party vendors to keep in mind what information do people have access to? And if you don't want them to have access to it, don't put it in your terms and conditions and say, hey, I'd prefer you didn't do this. It's, it's wrong and we'll shut your account down. Just don't even give them the ability to make that decision and to take that out of your hands. So now I'll go through some best practices that Stemless utilizes um, in terms of protecting consumer data and making sure that your, pri your privacy on our platform remains a chief concern. So the first thing that we do is something called timed rollouts. And we actually got this from Twitter. So a while ago, Twitter decided, hey, instead of the regular character limit, what if we double that? And what if we just saw how that played out? And instead of putting it out to everyone and their mom in one fell swoop, they rolled it out to 5% of their users and they got feedback from those 5%. Did they like it? Did they hate it? Did they complain? Did they tweet about it? And then based on that data, they took next steps. Now, for them, in that case, it was more of a marketing thing. Like, do we want to roll this out to everyone? Are we going to face this huge backlash? But from a security standpoint, what's nice is you have this very small subset of users using this new feature set. And from them, you can capture a lot of information. How they're using it. Are they happy? Are there any concerns that are happening out in the wild that I didn't think about in my lab test studio? And you will find that about four out of five times, there are things that you didn't think about. So rolling things out in really small increments is smart, not only from the perspective of marketing, let's see how this plays out, if people like it, but then also to protect yourself as a company. The second is multiple databases. So with Stemless, we accept online payments, we send out text messaging, we have customers' emails, we have their phone numbers, we have their addresses. We have a lot of very sensitive data. And the way that we protect that is we move it across multiple databases. So should any database, which is encrypted and is protected, go down, you would not get enough information to do anything with it. Now, obviously, that's not a challenge, so don't try. But you expose yourself to so much risk, companies expose themselves to so much risk when they centralize where that data is held. And especially when it comes to PII, take every precaution to spread that out as thinly as possible because should anything happen, you're not God, right? No one here is. Things can go wrong. It's Murphy's Law that they will go wrong. You don't want to face any reper repercussions and have to go back to your customers and say, hey, we just lost all your credit card data, or hey, a bunch of your emails got stolen. That would be the worst. 
and especially as a growing company, you start off really small. You crawl before you ball. And so you can't afford, when you're just starting to hit your stride and you're just starting to build a name for yourself, to lose that. Because it can take years to build up a reputation and that brand trust, but it can be lost in 30 seconds. Lastly, 200, or not lastly, but next, 256-bit encryption. This is standard practice, especially when it comes to anything payment related. And then, lastly for real this time, monitor your outbound APIs. So Stemless uses a lot of APIs, but they're all inbound. So we're getting data from other people. We only have one API that has outbound information, and we have very closely monitored how that was created, how that's used, and any change to that API has more thought process behind it than the actual design of the site. Because that's where you can get data in a way that seems legal and seems friendly. It's not a hacking attempt. No one's trying to break into your site. You are willingly giving that away. And so you want to make sure that what you're willingly giving away is what you want to be willingly giving away. So as a customer, how can you protect yourself? So first of all, anytime you're on a website, especially if you're going to give them, you know, anything from your name to your email to your payment information to your address to your phone number make sure it's protected so look for the https symbol at the top left hand corner of your browser and not http that's extremely paramount and you would be amazed at how many companies don't do this it's one of the most basic ways to protect yourself online next if you have questions and you're not sure how something's being used and you're hesitant to sign up, check out the terms and conditions and the privacy policies. These are always at the bottom of the page, or they should be if you're working with a reputable brand, and they'll tell you exactly how they use your data. Are they gonna put cookies on your browser? Do they share this? In, if they do share it, in what instances? Are they selling it? If they're selling it, who are they selling it to? What pieces of your data are they selling? And lastly, if you have questions, feel free to go ahead and ask. A company that knows what they're doing is going to answer them. A company that has no idea might ignore you. And if that's the case, err on the side of caution. It's okay, you don't have to make that transaction. But if you wanna work with companies that are gonna take you seriously as a consumer, you wanna make sure that they're answering your questions. And if enough people ask the same question, you'll start to see that answer pop up on the FAQ section. So with that, thanks for listening. Thanks for coming tonight. Thanks to our hosts, Lulu and Jacoby.